I'm dead. Oh my god, so close. He's gonna kill himself. Fair enough. Cheers. Go for the res. Go for the res. Go for the res. He's going for the res. He's dead. You know what? That's the perfect time to make the build video, isn't it? Hello everybody and welcome to my build video for the Stamina Nightblade Insta-Kill build. As you have just seen, this build has some sexy potential for pure new kids. Because this can pretty much one-shot any amount of health on any player, depending on the target. We play it in slightly different ways. But all in all, this build has the lot. We can put out some beastly damage, as we're going to demonstrate on this poor remaining victim of the group, who is absolutely screwed. Come here, you bastard. Alright, he's only level 18, but screw it, he can die. Okay, right, that's that done. Okay, so... We're going to cover the skills, we're going to cover the sets and all of that, but the biggest thing on this build is in fact the play style. Now, I'm not sure how this will change the next patch, but again, as with my DK, this is very much about demonstrating how the build can be played to give you a proper example of what you can do on a Stamina Nightblade gank based build. AK tick, I'll take it. So, our sets are as follows. We are not running a monster set. There is a way to fit a monster set in, but it's simply not worth fitting Balorg. Our main sets are better. 5 New Moon, 5 Titanborn, 5 1 1. Light on the gloves, heavy on the body. Titanborn, I'm using bits and bobs everywhere. All of these are stamina and all of them are divines. And then we are running an infused weapon damage on all pieces. Our front bar weapon is an Asylum Perfect Bow. This is the main part of your damage alongside Titanborn. 50% more on a snipe after arrow spray. For those who have not seen an explanation on how this is used, I suggest watching my dead shot build video. I will explain the method of using this through that. Your back bar can be absolutely anything. I've got a junk bow there, it really doesn't matter. If you do want, you can use a black rose bow on the back bar and slot magnum bolt where my rapid is. But to be honest, I spend so much time killing and riding that I really don't bother with a dot. Things are generally dead before that's ever relevant. The magnum bolt does have its use. It can protect you a little bit in some examples. Um, it's got its place. Our stats are quite hard to demonstrate since New Moon. I actually don't know if that shows on my tool tip, but Titanborn definitely doesn't. But this is giving us 440 weapon damage and 5,000 penetration when under 50% health. And we're forcing ourselves to be under that at all times. So our stats look low here. Well, actually they don't look that low, but they are lower by far than they actually will be in practice. 4.3k unbuffed weapon damage and 34k stamina, the regen 1.6k. That's actually pretty high regen and that is coming from our food, which is Lava Foot and Soul Strice. We don't need max health, it's really not relevant with our build, we're so squishy anyway that you may as well use this over the gold food since it's going to give you a higher stamina pool for more damage. Potion wants to be Essence of Speed. This is the best of the options. Major Expedition for movement speed. Major Brutality is your source of weapon damage buff since we're not going to run a two-hander. If you don't want to use this, you can slot a two-hander on that back bar and again replace Rapids as you like. Up to you, but I don't know. I find the potion pretty convenient. The speed is really useful in some opportunities. And then lastly is our Stamina Restoration for Sustain. Our skills are as follows. Firstly, we've got Camouflaged Hunter. This is going to increase our crit on the front bar with Minor Berserk. Um, so we get Major Savagery for the crit bonus since we don't get that off our pot. We could, but there's no point. We're going to have this here anyway for Minor Berserk from behind. Focused Aim is the better morph of Snipe. This is definitely the better choice. Big, big damage on this tooltip. Even more once we've got Titanborn and infinitely more once we are using the Asylum combo. Concealed weapon is well worth it. We're never going to cast this, but this is extremely useful for actually getting around. It's going to give us a 25% movement buff while we're sneaking. So we can use this to benefit with our cloak a lot more, which is our last skill. And then our remaining skill is Acid Spray. Again, this is the better morph of Bombard if playing solo in this style. Bombard is not necessarily too bad. There are times where you could get quite a bit of benefit from that. So it is pretty good, if, for example, in group BGs benefit you have there of course is that you root your opponent rather than having this extra dot and that can save your life 
Incap Strike is my chosen front bar ulti. The reason you want this is we have no assassin skill on the front bar, so it gives us our passives from there. And it also gives us a little extra crit on top, again, from the assassin passives. On the back bar, we are using channeled acceleration. We want the longer duration since we're going to be in there ganking most of the time. So why not get the longer duration on the minor four so we don't have to cast it. 36 seconds. In that amount of time, you've probably either won or lost the fight against however many people. It ends very quickly, as shown by the clip previously. Equilibrium is going to give us our way of reducing our health. So whenever we cast this, we lose health and we gain magicka. Now, interestingly, this is also a really good way to sustain our cloak because we can cloak, bar swap, equilibrium. Cloak, bar swap, equilibrium. Obviously, it's when we're on high health. But for example, if I pop a big figure, we can go in, we can cast, and this way we can maintain our cloak sustain very, very nicely. So it's a good way to keep yourself safe if you are in trouble. Mostly it's there to proc your Titan boards. We get a health under 50 and then we go for the combo. Rapid re uh, rapid maneuver, sorry, is my third skill. You can put any skill you like there. I've given you a few examples. Rally for brutality if you don't want it on your pot. You could use Magnum Bolt. You could use any skill that you prefer on this spot. I use rapid maneuvers simply because it's an easier way to get round and I'm generally pretty quick with my fights on this build. So I prefer just to get the next fight quicker and quicker. Meditation is definitely slot number four. We need a way of sustaining if we're out of the fight and just boosting up quickly. It saves you a lot of time. Well worth the slot. And lastly is Vigor for if we do get in trouble. Back bar ulti, you have some flex. I like Soul Siphon for a defensive ulti to immediately heal to full if caught. If you do pop that, you're probably not going to die. And you're going to have a bit of time to back out of there. You could use that with Image, but it's pretty tight on your Max Magicka, so it's probably not worth it. Hence, I don't bother with Image. Um, but another really good ulti here is the Bow Ult. I simply didn't try that because I can't be bothered morphing it, to be quite blunt. Um, but I do like the defensive ult, and to be honest, I think Incap does just as well. Targets are generally dead for them. Our Mundus then is going to be the Shadow, not the Warrior and not the Tower. We want crit damage on our guaranteed snipe, increase your crit damage. So our first snipe, the combo is going to be from Cloak. And also we have a decent crit chance. We have 47.2, so the chance that we crit something in there is up there. If you crit anything, this is going to work out more damage than using either the Warrior or the Tower. I've tested this, take my word on it, it will save you a lot of time testing. Vampirism is also going to be worth it. Vampirism obviously beneficial for the movement speed. Anything that costs us on there really doesn't matter. Again, we're squishy as it gets. So, last but not least is our combo. It's very simple in practice. All you want to do is cast a snipe. Then after that snipe, you're going to light attack. No, you're not. What am I on about? First, you're going to snipe. Then you're going to snipe again, light attack, bombard. That's for a tanky target. If you've got a squishier target, you're simply going to snipe, light attack, bombard. That's all you've got to do. But your range is really important. You need to be hitting them. Imagine this rocks my target from about this range with your snipe. Then as your snipe is cast, you need to move in to cast your bombard. That way your bombard will land before your snipe and you will get the buff on your snipe for the big damage. But if you do want more details on that, I suggest going back a few videos to my Deadshot build video where I explain that in quite more depth. Scander, fortunately, has potentially provided us a target to demonstrate this on, I hope. So we can come behind him and show you the full combo. He's digging his own grave. We stand about this range. He's 26k health, and we can tell he's got a one hand shield. So we go for the heavier combo. We get our health down. We buff ourselves up with channeled acceleration and brutality. Then we go snipe, a second snipe, light bombard as we go in. That was pretty unfortunate we didn't crit, but he dies to the dot anyway. You get the idea. Now, Skander is on a very tanky build. If we do fight somebody squishy, it's game over. If we crit the snipe with the bombard, definitely going to die. And that's pretty much all you've got to do. So, I hope this build video will be useful to you. I will uh, proceed to upload my final Magic Decay build in a couple of days, hopefully.